Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. 10 o'clock UK time and uh, 5 o'clock Jamaica time. I want to wish you a wonderful evening in the festive season. Good. Um, I share this around in the meantime. Give a few moments for persons to come on. Okay, I just want to see if there's anybody on. Let me just check something here. Hey, Mark, you're there. Hey, good, 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 good. Fantastic. Uh, Mark, do what you normally do. Invite yourself. Let me just see something while I'm just doing a test really at the same time. Um, let me just do an intro. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you to the late one with yours, Shuli Silver and Sidiel, um, all the way from the UK. And uh, just want to do another session of the discussions on topical issues which are relevant, poignant, and very important to um, Jamaica. Yes, land of my birth. What can I say? Wakanda. <laughs> well, you know, we, we, we've just come out of uh, a, a bruising, somewhat of an election in the UK um, with the whole advent of the 2016 referendum with the, with the, with the Brexit. And we also just came out of the election also with um with boris johnson winning but one of the things that came up a lot during this whole discussion with the whole brexit and um was this the role of members of parliament that is and it's something which i need to still tap into the role of members of parliament and i'm talking about from the uk here the role of members of parliament because what we were what we were seeing during the whole debate with all brexit was that MPs who agreed and somewhat signed up to the <clears throat> withdrawal agreement all jumped ship. Some of them were from these parties that agreed to, to honor the 
outcome of the referendum, which was to leave by the 17.4 million people who won, but they did everything in their power to try to stop it. Joe Swinson from the Lib Dem, she stopped the process. Dominic Green from the, from the Conservative Party, he was objecting. Chaka Uma from the Labour Party jumped ship. See, they jump ship also from different parties. So what is the role of the MP? Is the MP role for his constituents? Is the role of the MP for his um, party? Is the role of the MP for the national good? Now, during all this time with all debate and discussions regarding MPs in the UK, one of the things that I never looked at and never considered was this possible, this point was was the role of an MP to supplement and to feed his constituents financially, right? That is something whereby should the MP's salary play a fundamental role in that? And that has been something which came up today and came up recently in an article. And this is relating to Jamaica where MP says the pay is rubbish, right? House Speaker says, the pay is rubbish. Char, Perna Charles Sr. wants elected officials to be in a position to take care of their constituents. Now, I think that is a, a good idea. I, I think it, it is important for uh, elected officials to be in a position to take care of their constituents. But what is it when they talk about caring for their constituents? That's a big question. And, and I want to... I want to... I want to hopefully I can get Mark Renaissance Cameron. Uh, Mark is in Discovery Bay right now in Jamaica. Um, Mark, for some reason, I don't know where you are located, but somehow I'm not seeing that particular link to somewhat invite you in. Or if you can invite yourself in, that would be great. But um, this is what the newspaper article said. Soon to retire Speaker of the House of Representatives, Colonel Charles Sr. labeled the salaries that parliamentarian get as rubbish and wants representative to place in a better position to take care of those who vote for them. Charles Senior will not be facing the electorate as a candidate for Clarendon North Central, which he now represents in Parliament in the next general election during 2021. What he's saying is that he think it is very crucial and it is important that they get more money. To be a good parliament requires that you have to take certain interests in the constituents when it comes to the people. For example, education, health of the family, welfare of the child, environment in which people live. The 83-year-old veteran stated, there's no way $300,000, Jamaican dollars, can compensate anybody who truly going to want to represent a constituency if you have to assist with medical bills and they come to your office every day in educating the child, providing books, uniform, transport, and food. Plus, you have to assist those who are not working to take care of the children and not going to school that cannot do. The politics that we play in Jamaica is not executive politics. Where you drive past and say hi and wave, that's not what it is anymore. It is one in which you are the family involved with a consequence. See, who don't have a job, you have to help them with some food. Who don't have a good house, you have to help them fix it. Who get a medical bill and can't buy it, you have to buy it. Whose car breaks down, you have to help. It is a total involvement with the people. Involvement is to assist them in their everyday living for themselves and their families, Charles said. So what is, what is being paid to MP, if he's doing his job, is foolishness. If you follow me to, to the country, I'll drive through and the request that follow me everywhere I stop, take care of the month's salary that I get. If I have to respond to 50% of the request, he went on. Charles said, one of the reasons why people are not voting anymore in high numbers because they complain of not getting benefits from politicians. Well, I'm just reading what is in the paper here. I'm sure it's not misconstrued. When you have a population like Jamaica where 50% of the people don't vote, why you think they're not voting is because they don't get nothing. They have their prescriptions folded up until they break. They have no money to fill them. If the MPs don't give them, they can't fill it. Plus, a lot of them don't eat, don't buy no clothes, and their children don't go to school. Wow, that's a tall order for the MPs in Jamaica. 
Maybe our politics is wrong. Maybe it is. But we give the impression that we can help if you vote for us. What happens? I tell a man, vote for me and I will help him. He wants his house to fix. I'll help. He wants the road to fix. I'll help. And he promised them something that is directly affecting them. Like they don't have water in this area from whatever, from whenever. You say you're going to get water, but no water come. You say you're going to get electricity, him don't get it. So why do you think a man will vote for an election day if you have no electricity or water or road or MP he can't attend school? It's because it, the MP is poorer than many of the people that they are serving. I'm not saying that you'll always be able to do all the things that are necessary, but right now you're not doing any. I've been in a constituency for 20 years and half the constituency don't have no water. And water is in abundance two or three miles away on the flat. A quarter of my constituency don't have no electricity because rural electrification program can't work up there. It's rubbish. The man also served as senator in the ruling Jamaica Labour Party said, right? It's interesting. He proceeded to give personal experience of voter apathy, which he said affects almost every representative. I went to a man to ask him to vote for me. I went to a man to ask him to vote. He said to Mr. Child, I'll vote for you, but you see the road that comes to my yard, you have to fix it before election. I thought that was what the role of the parish council or in the local or in the UK, the local authority or the, the people that fix the road. Not for an MP to personally go and try and sort that out. Of course, I understand they can use their influence. However, now this is the right thing. Right before the election, I said, but boss, election is tomorrow. Him say him not business and him don't vote. I've had to use some of my salary to do this and that. And if I didn't do it, I couldn't run back. When you see a child couldn't go to school this week because he neither has a bus fare nor lunch and he's not on path. How the hell are you going to walk? away from him and say you are the MP. When a man comes to your office and says he's dying and he gets a prescription for a drug that is not at the hospital and he has to buy it, what are you going to do? Tell him say you don't have no money or go thief? And many MPs get into trouble as a result of that? Wow. In today's world, the man has no light in his yard so he can't watch TV. There's no housing scheme that he can get a house. So apart from the fact that you are not paid well, you have to hide. Apart from the fact that you're not paid well, you have to hide. Many MPs have to hide from their constituents and consequently because they are not able to fund the request. And people will say, you're not going on with nothing, man. You now take care of me. Because they now expect you to take care of them. In bold letters. The politics may be very wrong. But it's open before you. A man considers his vote very expensive. A man considers his vote very expensive. That means to say there must be somewhat, and I'm saying this, must be some exchange. You know? Um, um, Mark, somehow Virgin, I can't seem to see, you know. I don't know what is happening there. Mark Renaissance Cameron, I can't see a Virgin. Let me see if I can find you. No, I can't see you to add you on. I don't know where... In, we're in Jamaica, the man of his star. The man of his in some place, place, lock off or something like that. Maybe I have to get Winston Barr to come on. Um, maybe you need to log out and come back in. But I'll keep reading because this is very interesting. Know the politics from the, from the beginning is to promise people that you can do things for them if you, they do a thing for you. I'll give you house, land, water, electricity, school, hospital if you vote for me. From the beginning, Buster said, promise a little this, a little of this. Norman Manley promised education. Buster promised food. The people say you can't need medication. You have to get food. So Buster win because the man say you have to get food. That remind me of something. I think Damien Crawford was wanting to, to teach person certain things. And they said they want food. I think that's why I lost. That's what I heard. So the thing started from there. It's never executive in Jamaica where MPs assist in governance. So this is this is the crux of what I'm thinking. And this is maybe the crux of where we're going. And this is maybe the crux of what needs to amend and change in Jamaica. It, it says right here, it's never executive in Jamaica where an MP is to assist in governance. An MP is to assist you in your yard and your domestic affairs. In other countries, the executive is governance. Now, 
it's interesting to say that because that is going to point me towards when I make a comparison with the British government, in, in a sense. Mark, I can't send an invite because you're not, I'm not seeing um, something which I normally live. Uh, Mark, I, I think you, you may need to log out and log back in because the, the, the thing to give you the invite, I'm just not seeing that. I can see other persons. I can see Winston Bart that I can invite. I can see Andrew Wall, Christine Campbell, Ellen Prezzo. I can see Kathy. I can see persons that I can invite. But I'm not seeing what we normally see for you where I can invite you. I don't know if because you're in Jamaica now. Normally we do it very well when we're in the U.S. But normally you can actually somehow try to invite yourself in. I don't know if you must try to sabotage you or so, but you got to work at it. Let me just keep going on. And you maybe you need to just log out or log back in or so. So if the thing started from the never executive in Jamaica where MPs assist in governments and MPs assist in your yard and your domestic affairs. In other countries, the executive is governance. If you don't send a drum of water to a man's yard, him don't drink tea. If you don't choke Matt on him road and him have no road, if you don't give him a bus fare for him children, they don't go to school. If you don't give him something for the lunch, they don't eat. Charles insists that the world politics has to change. Government is saying, and that is very interesting because what he's saying right there, it has to change. Government is said should be given full support to what he termed the things that MP need to do among them providing electricity, water, healthcare, education, and security. So I'm looking at this as a learning curve, as an educational tool, whereby what Charles is actually saying is what the reality is, right? And he accepts that that is not maybe how it should be, but that's how it has been, whereby a man, if he had food in yard, and in exchange for vote, that is what he's actually somewhat alluding to. I'm lucky that I have four doctors in my family, he says. I send patients to my children. My son give million dollars in surges free, but not every family is that fortunate, right? You cannot blame these people because the politics of today is, I will vote for you if you assist me with my difficulties and I promise to assist you with difficulties if you vote for me. So once you vote for me, I have to hide. So next time around, I'm not voting, Charles Sr. said. Rather than providing incentives, to vote for them, to exercise the democratic right, Charles Cena suggests that an audit should be done across Jamaica to know what the needs are in certain areas, but maintain that there need to be a revision of our politics. Charles also is of a firm view that by improving the remuneration of parliament, it will improve the quality of candidates who would want to become involved in politics. So what we're seeing here is... Um, uh, an interview or uh, uh, a report or um, uh, a discussion whereby Pernell Charles Sr., who is the Speaker of the House, um, from my idea and my knee, I've seen Pernell Charles. I mean, he's always been there. Um, everybody knows Pernell Charles as being um, a senior member of Parliament. But what I want to look at is, is it, it is very enlightening um, to hear what he's actually saying. And you cannot wrong him for saying that he wants to help his people. You cannot wrong an MP for wanting to help the people in his constituents. You cannot wrong a person that wanting to help. I put a post up today um, which, which simply says, and, and the, post, it, the post is very clear, and, and people are still commenting on it. The post is this, and this is what it says. If someone needs help, give it to them. Right? If someone needs help, give it to them. But my question now is this. What is the role of a member of parliament, right? The UK is the so-called mother of democracy. The UK is where Jamaica got their parliamentary system from, and it follows that to a T. So I, I've spoken to a, a couple of MPs in the UK here. Uh, as, as you know, I'm involved in politics here, and I've got access to some MPs. And... The role of an MP in this country is not to be given handout or food or so, you know. I mean, don't get me wrong. Somebody can help somebody there. But it's not for the people to see them as a, a cash cow, if I can put it that way. Now, 
Perna Charles said that the, 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 the reality of the governance in Jamaica by members of parliament is not about the, that executive bit. It's about what he said. It's, it's on the ground, helping the man. The person need light, the person need food, help them. You're driving through the place, you know? You know? And so let me break down what the UK, what the UK said, right? You said, what do MPs do in their constituency in the UK? In their constituency, MP holds surgery in their office. Local people can come along to discuss any matters that concern them. MPs also attend function, visit school, business, and generally try to meet as many people as possible. This gives MPs further insight and context into the issues that they may discuss when they return to Westminster. So Westminster is the hub. So if you see in Parliament at times, you hear an MP and you hear Jerry Corbyn, the, the opposition leader, will stand up and mention, say, say uh, I'm, I'm calling, I'm right, I'm speaking on behalf of Mary Jane. Mary Jane, she lost her universal credit, and this is blah blah blah. What can the Prime Minister do about Mary Jane? And the Prime Minister, not wanting to fob it all because there's a name which is being mentioned, will say, it is very important that Mary Jane really gets sorted out and i will instruct my learned friend or my colleague who is the, the 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 minister for works and pension to really look into that to make sure um mary jane is okay but it is not for the prime minister or the member of parliament to go and start to give handout to mary jane because that's somewhat it, it, it's not correct what should really be happening is for the benefits is okay well there's, there's a difference here in in the uk because there is a benefit system, there is a welfare state whereby people who are not um, able to to help themselves um, physically, financially, there is a system. They have the lack of housing, they can go somewhere for housing. Similar to what we call, the so the local authority is equivalent to the parish council. The, the role of the MP again is when a parliament, what do MPs do in parliament? Yeah, MPs generally spend their time working in the House of Commons. This can include raising issues affecting their constituents, right? Attending debates, voting on new laws, by asking questions of a government minister, as I said a while, on your behalf, supporting, highlighting particular campaigns which local people feel strongly about. Most MPs are members of committee will look at issues in detail from government policy and new laws to wider topics like human rights. If there's something wrong with my road here, you know, I know my member of parliament very well. In fact, she goes to my church, you know, and, um, you know, I, I can maybe, I, I remember one year, actually, there was uh, some chuck or so made a big dent on my drive. And what, what we did, what I did was, I think it was a Christmas period, contacted the mayor, um, because you got access, contacted the MP and just, just sort of blast or something. And within two twos, within a couple of days or so, there was a chuck from the council, which the council will delegate the responsibility to fix that road, to fix that. It's not the MP have to go in his pocket to do that or try to get somebody to do that. Not the mayor trying to get in his pocket to do that. You have funds which is allocated to that. That is why I heard about the consolidation fund, which is something which, um, which maybe is what should be paid into. But it seemed like there seemed to be the need for a fundamental overall. So I, I'm not looking at this in a very critical way of Pernell Charles, but I'm looking at it as, as information to see how the system can be changed from being broken. Right? Let me hear what people have to say. Abraham, I'm here. Mark, I don't know where you are. I need to find it. Virgin, let's do this. Pot pound fire. What's out of pot pound fire? So, uh, you need to set me an invite. It's not an M. It's okay. It's not an MP responsibility, as Mark has said. Sabotage Virgin. Maybe it's because I'm in Discovery Bay. <laughs> Maybe it's because you're in Discovery Bay. That's why they're giving you a hard time. Here's my point. MP should make sure that we have good security, power, and good infrastructure, which is not much once those are in place. It should be a part-time job. Also, Jamaica is broke. We cannot continue to spend board money on service not rendered. Parish council does that, bro, not MP. He need to retire with his outdated attitude. Now, I have to agree with Mark. And, and the, the question needs to be asked, and I love to hear. I love to hear what the, the I think it's 60 MPs, what the MPs say in Jamaica. What 
it'd be good for Jamaicans to ask you, MP, what is your role? Because according to what Pernell Charles is saying, Pernell Charles is saying, and he's a speaker of the house. The guy's a father of the house. The guy's been there from my idea of me. I think he's been there from God wearing cocky pants or something like that. Some you and all these guys. These are persons. I mean, you know, we know these names. So he knows what he's talking about. But maybe has he seen the light? But has he seen the light? Or is he setting himself up? Or setting everybody up before he leaves? Need more pay. More pay to feed the people. The means to an end. But is it the right means to an end? It is good to want to feed the people. It is good to want to get lights. It is good to want to get food. It is good to get want to get help for somebody car who's breaking down and need help. And you come to your MP. But really and truly, should the system somewhat be directing persons to say, and a training thing uh, with all Vision 2030 should be going through now, saying to MPs and start to go through a process of, uh, yeah, it's going to have some withdrawal syndrome. Pull back and say, you need to start to tell the people that that is not your role. Let the chips fall. I mean to say, if you've got to lose your seat, you lose your seat or whatever like that. Let the chips fall. That's my thinking. So therefore, no MP should be uh, giving handout. Because what it does, it brings you into disrepute. It brings you into a position now whereby you can be caught out for, you know, fraud and all those things you know conflict of interest i mean we need to step up to our next level so i'm not coming on here um with a pnp bashing or a jlp bashing but because i've got a great and fantastic and interesting um interest in jamaica i have an interest in the political system here in the uk i speak about it a lot and it's one of the key topics that i want to talk about is the role of an mp um, I, was, I was looking at something earlier and, and I typed this and what it says is this. Let me see if I can, if I, if I can bold it, you know, which, which also set the stage in a way where it says that the, the first duty. Now, I, and I, 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 I maybe a person might say, stop, stop um, using the, the UK as the template. But I have to use the UK as a template because Jamaica use the UK as a template. The maker still has the queen as the head of state. The governor general is the head of state in Jamaica. The parliamentary system replicate exactly the UK system, right? The first duty of a member of parliament is to do what he think is in his faithful and disinterested judgment is right and necessary for the honor and the safety of Great Britain, right? And this should replicate same for Jamaica, right and necessary for the honor and the safety of Jamaica. His second duty is to his constituents, 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 constituents of whom he is a representative, but not the delegate. That's very interesting. He is a representative, but not the delegate. So what we're talking about is bringing this to the next level. There's got to be this somewhat hands-off policy and hands-on. Hands-off and hands-on. Hands-off whereby one operates from an executive position. And then one of your um, parish councils to be very effective. Your local councillors to be very effective. Everyone to put your consolidation fund to be effective. right? So therefore your MP now is not touching. is becoming somewhat a bit untouchable. Whereby he's protected. The system should be protecting him from fraud, protecting him from um, putting his hand in the in the kitty. Should, you know, nothing is wrong. I don't think anything is wrong for an MP because I mean, teachers in school these days, UK and even in Jamaica, I understand what they do. They they help. They 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 see some children without food. They put money in their pocket and, and they give them food. They they buy stuff for them. It's not immune from the UK. You hear about it a lot. You know, people help people. Nothing is wrong with that. But it is when it is deemed to be a part of the fabric of the political process whereby, and I quote what Pernod Charles said, which, which is very, 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 and very concerning with some of the things which he says. Whereby you, you cannot blame the people because politics today is I'll vote for you if you can assist me with my difficulties. 
That's what he says. Politics today is I will vote for you if you can assist me with my difficulties. He said, it's never executive in Jamaica where MP is to assist in governance. Do you see where the problem is? This is a senior MP which is actually saying this, right? It is never... Eg so the thing started from there. It is never executive in Jamaica where MP is to assist in governance. An MP is to assist you in your yard and your domestic affairs. What is an MP assisting in a person's domestic affairs? If anything, that should be the counsellor. If anything, another counsellor should be affected in someone's domestic affairs. In other countries, the executive is the governance. If you don't send a drum of water to a man's yard, <coughs> him don't drink tea. If you don't throw mar on him road, him have no road. So therefore, what the MP should be doing there, if there's no water, then you need to get the NWC. Is that what it is, Courtney? How are you? Michael Mason? Get the, get the NWC. Facilitate that process. Go and put some pressure. Speak to the Prime Minister, Minister of Works or whatever like that. And say, that street there need, need uh, water. Right? Right? If 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 there's no mall on the road or whatever like that, need to get the PWD and whatever they have to do in Jamaica, or, you know. I'm trying to say, you know, get the road fixed. You know, my mother called me the other day and she said the road that we live in, no trees or so, it needs fixing, right? But but sometimes because of political faction or whatever like that, they, that is might not interested. But that's not should be, because people pay their tax, and the road is needed to be fixed. So why should an MP be doing that? An MP, yes, should be helping in facilitating the process, speaking to the different factors, having these meetings, and making sure to get the job done. But don't feel obligated. An MP, a member of parliament, should not feel obligated that he has to dip his hand in his pocket to fix things. Because what does that say? That says that only the rich man can be an MP. Only somebody who has certain... Um, uh, financial backing, financial resources can be an MP. So therefore, what you're doing, you're eliminating, is an eliminating process. But then at the same time, people say when persons become M members of parliament in Jamaica, they don't just end up coming out on, this, on, I mean, looking drained or so. They come out looking filthy rich and fat. So it seems like there need to be a, a, a serious discussion within the political factions in Jamaica to answer questions to what is being said. They are saying 50% of people don't vote because they don't see the sense of voting because if somebody now give them or help them with something in a, in a sense. Is that the case? Is that the case? They need to be an overall. Courtney Hopkins said, it's going to be difficult to change the political culture in Jamaica the constitution has to change in order to facilitate good government. Do you really think so, Courtney? Do you think the constitution is what needs to change in order to facilitate good governance? Or is it good governance need to be in place by the persons who are in charge of good governance? Remember what Pernod Charles says. Other countries work effectively, but not in Jamaica. Because it seemed like it has been festered from early, years ago, whereby people look out for the MP to give them their financial resources and for them to be well fed for everything so they go to the MP. So therefore, they need to be possibly be a cleaning out, a clean house, whereby it come to a point whereby no handout, that's going to be difficult, of course, you know, and, and no way how that can be uh, facilitated and therefore, draw a particular line. Those who need to lose them seat, lose them seat. I mean, I remember one, one election at a time, one party didn't actually stand. And the, the, you vote out the government, the government comes in. You don't want the government, the still the government comes in. So I believe somehow something needs to be done. Or ladies and gentlemen, dog them your supper. Right? And it's not going to change. And then you're going to have Pernell Charles Jr., 50 years from now, in Parliament, chances are uh, um, maybe getting the seed from his father and maybe saying the same thing again. Why? Because people did not make that decision. In the UK, 
what you saw recently regarding the elections, you've seen where the people took control and they voted according to what they want. They, they, they sack people, they fired persons, right, based on the votes. They said they want to get a particular direction for the country. They got that. Boris Johnson took a risk. Corbyn took a risk. The election was for Corbyn to win and Boris Johnson to lose. And you saw what has happened because of the disrespect to the constituents. So therefore, the constituents need to feel empowered. Now, how is that going to come across? I don't believe that's going to come across by the present political parties and the political factions in Jamaica. I believe that it's going to come across by um, good corporate citizens, lobby groups, myself, people, speaker, Mark Renaissance Cameron, person speaking up on these particular issues. So in a way, I do welcome this um, article by Pernell Charles being very honest, being sincere and say it as it is. Maybe this is his final pound of flesh before he retires and sing Kumbaya. But it, it, it is food for thought, but not just for food for thought because we have been there with many food for thoughts in the past. What we need to deal with now is actually how to actually deliver the, the good things. Cyprian Pitkin, I, in a sense, I can see that you're there, but somehow I, I cannot see you. So ladies and gentlemen, that is... The, the, the issue that I just wanted to to touch on basically just for us to think about it think about it very seriously and how you believe you can make a better Jamaica but in order to make a better Jamaica you've got to actually take on board some of these serious things that Colonel Charles Jr. said and, um, and, and to see how that can change from both political factions right um, Courtney said, my brother, you speak of the road in Carabites and we are very familiar with it. Every time you try to rehabilitate, the first thing you hear is a private road, yet the people are taxpayers. That shouldn't be. There you are, Courtney. You spoke about it right there. Right? People are paying tax. Right? But things become a bit somewhat, what should I say, um, tribalistic, if anything. What? How can that be? How can that be? Wait until my man come in power. Shouldn't be. The things that Colonel Charles said shouldn't be. But it's reality. And we cannot hide ourselves from the reality and the fact of the situation. So, ladies and gentlemen, what he said? No, what he said. The politics from the beginning is to promise people that you can do things for them if they do a thing for you. I will give you house, land, water, electricity. School hospital, if you vote for me from the beginning. Buster promised a little of this. Norman Manley promised education. Buster promised food. The people say you can't have education. You have to get food. So Buster win. Because the man said you have to get food before him can go to school. Norman said once you get education, you can get food forever. <laughs> I leave it there. I leave it right there. For you to think. And for you to consider and for you to pontificate and for you to act as citizens and friends of Jamaica because the power is in your hands. MPs come and go, right? The people will always be there forever. Let me tell you this. As they say, you vote out the government, you get the government in. But who vote out the government? The people. And the people will vote in the government and vote out the government. So the government will go and still come come and go but the people will always be there forever so therefore it is for the people to be educated and not just for the MPs only to stand back and say no more but it's for all people of Jamaica should rise up and say we are not looking for handout what we are looking for is an atmosphere what we are looking for is influence what we are looking for is the facilities the oily mechanism that make Jamaica run Right? What we need is an effective parish council, effective consolidation fund, as they say. Is that, is that what they call it? Uh, some, some fund, some fund which is used for constituency, constituency development fund, CDF, is that it? Something like that. And, and, and to, really, to really bring it home. And as I said, I have to draw a parallel to the UK because no way will you have members of parliament giving up money to constituents on a roll and doing like that. That is called curry favor and they call it gerrymandering and, and all these sort of 
all of things, buying votes and all those. That, that, that's where it's going to get into. It gets into that murky zone. Uh, we, we, we need to step away from that murky zone. It's a new era. And it's step up to the next level. It's 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't get Mark Cameron today. But of course, this conversation will continue. And I'll continue it. Thank you those for your 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 um, support and your assistance and um, your thoughts. And um, let's let's keep it going. So thank you very much. And um, yeah, and all the best. Peace. Cheers.